1957 and you are at home with your family somewhere in the United Kingdom. Where would you like to be? Ohio. Ohio? <laughs> 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 Quick, somebody gets out their, their mobile phone and Google Ohio UK, perhaps there's a village. <laughs> So you are, I don't know, you're, you're Swansea. Swansea. Okay, well just, we'll be safe and go with Swansea. So it's a Monday evening, 1957, Swansea in Wales, nice place to be. Um, you're at home with your family and you're having dinner. I don't know what you're eating. What are you eating in Swansea in 1957? Potatoes. <laughs> There was no takeaway pizza, but there's lots of potatoes. Shepherd's pie, great. 1957, you were at home with your family. It's a Monday evening, you're having shepherd's pie for your dinner, and you are excited. I mean, you are really, really excited. You are ecstatic. Do you know why? Shepherd's pie. <laughs> this is a really, really good shepherd's pie but you always have shepherd's pie on Mondays don't you yes. tonight there's something else something really really different something that's going to change your life who said that you have just received a special delivery it is a brand new Decca DM4 what's that <laughs> you were right the first time it's a television Yes, you have just received a brand new Decca DM4 television. Now back in those days, it was very, very unusual for people to own their TVs. People would rent them. So this is a rented TV. And it's already been set up in the sitting room, in the living room. Sitting in the sitting room, living in the living room. I don't know which you prefer. <laughs> After dinner, you do your homework like a good student, just like your parents have encouraged you to do. And then it's time for everybody to move through to the sitting room and you all sit down and the television, this Deca DM4 is in the corner. You are feeling, how are you feeling? Oh my God. Who's got the remote control? <laughs> you are too clever. <laughs> There is no remote control. <laughs> These are in the days before remote control. So father, he's in charge. 1957, sorry. Things have changed since then, but back in 1957, father wore the trousers. But thankfully things have changed. So, so father turns on the TV. Back in 1957 in the, in the United Kingdom, we just, how many channels did we have, do you know? Two. Two. Do you know which ones they were? In fact, there was just one BBC channel and it was just called BBC because there wasn't BBC One or Two, just BBC. There was two channels, the first one was BBC, the second one ITV. So British Broadcasting Corporation and ITV Independent Television. Now, Father turns on, Father turns on the television, he puts it onto the BBC and there is a news program, a current affairs program. And tonight, there's a report from Switzerland. Your neighbours. <laughs> Sorry, that was in the genos. <laughs> About a spaghetti tree. About a spaghetti tree. Are you mad? No. They don't exist. <laughs> so the Po Valley. So you think you, 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 you know what this long-running current affairs program is, don't you? No. Well, apparently, the spring of 1957 was a particularly good year for a certain crop in Switzerland, you see. And so you watch this report. This is the very first thing you've ever watched on television. Not the most exciting thing, perhaps. And the narrator starts speaking about this certain crop in Switzerland 
And he tells you a few things about this crop. Let me tell you about this. He says that this crop that's having a very successful year in Switzerland, of course, as we all know, it grows on trees. It grows on trees. After you pick it, you lay it to dry in the warm alpine sun. He also tells you that it's long and thin. You have to boil it and then drain it before eating it. And it usually comes from Italy. So although this report is coming from Switzerland, this crop usually comes from Italy. Now just put up your hands if you think you know what this crop is, but don't say anything. Put up your hands if, you, if you're not sure, but you think maybe you could guess. What do you think this crop could be? What is it in Italian? Caruba. What's caruba? says, many of you, I am sure, will have seen pictures of the vast plantations in the Po Valley. So my question for you, are there carob plantations here? No. It was a good guess. So it's not carob. What else could it be? Rice. Rice. Let me just put these facts back in the rice. So is rice long and thin? It, rice is long and thin before they cut it up. <laughs> so, and rice doesn't actually technically grow on trees, does it? Could it be asparagus? Could it be tomatoes? Spaghetti. But you're the second person that said spaghetti. <laughs> I know that I know that Italians have a thing going with spaghetti. Anyway, this report finishes. Yes. Maybe corn. Maybe corn. Maybe corn. Now this re the report comes to an end. <laughs> Rice is kind of short and dumpy, isn't it? Anyway, the report finishes, and you're watching the television. You turn to your little sister, and you say to your little sister, I didn't know it grew on trees. And your little sister says to you, where did you think it came from? And you say, I don't know, I hadn't really thought about it. Because back in 1957, there were some people that didn't know where this crop came from. Let me show you this original report. This is from a, a news current affairs program called Panorama, which is the longest running current affairs program in the history of TV. Presented by a man called David Dimbleby, or was it Richard Dimbleby? I've forgotten. One of the Dimbleby brothers. It's very famous. And it goes something like this. It isn't only in Britain that spring this year has taken everyone by surprise. Here in the Ticino, on the borders of Switzerland and Italy, the slopes overlooking Lake Lugano have already burst into flower, at least a fortnight earlier than usual. But what, you may ask, has the early and welcome arrival of bees and blossom to do with food? Well, it's simply that the past winter, one of the mildest in living memory, has had its effect in other ways as well. Most important of all, it's resulted in an exceptionally heavy spaghetti crop. The last two weeks of March are an anxious time for the spaghetti farm. There's always a chance of a late frost, which, while not entirely ruining the crop, generally impairs the flavour and makes it difficult for him to obtain top prices in world markets. But now these dangers are over, and the spaghetti harvest goes forward. 
Forget the Gulf of Aden here in Switzerland is not, of course, carried out on anything like the tremendous scale of the Italian industry. Many of you, I'm sure, will have seen pictures of the vast spaghetti plantations in the Po Valley. For the Swiss, however, it tends to be more of a family affair. Another reason why this may be a bumper year lies in the virtual disappearance of the spaghetti weevil, the tiny creature whose depredations have caused much concern in the past. After picking, the spaghetti is laid out to dry in the warm alpine sun. Many people are often puzzled by the fact that spaghetti is produced at such uniform length. But this is the result of many years of patient endeavor by plant breeders who succeeded in producing the perfect spaghetti. And now the harvest is marked by a traditional meal. Toasts to the new crop are drunk in these boccalinos. And then the waiters enter bearing the ceremonial dish. And it is, of course, spaghetti. Picked earlier in the day, dried in the sun, and so brought fresh from garden to table at the very peak of condition. For those who love this dish, there's nothing like real homegrown spaghetti. Exactly. This is the very first time the medium of television was used for an April Fool's prank. An April Fool's joke. This is very, very famous. I thought you might like this to use with your own students because April the 1st is coming up. How do you feel about that? 